Yo guys, what is up? It's Dave, the Open Source Gangster here. So let's talk about Backtrack 5. It's a popular Linux distribution known for its variety and tools and implementations used to test network security. And wouldn't it be great if you could run it on your Android device? <laughs> well, you can, in just a few easy steps. So some prerequisites in which you need for this project. It's first, a rooted Android device. Next, you'll need at least 5 gigabytes of free space on your device. Now, just a little heads up, you're probably going to need to use this on your internal storage just because if you're using your SD card, it's most likely formatted as FAT32. And as you may know, FAT32 cannot hold a file larger than 4 gigabytes, and this is a 5 gigabyte file. So be prepared to use your internal storage. And that's pretty much it. So let's get it started. Okay, so what you want to do is download the ARM version of Backtrack 5. So go to version, Backtrack 5, make sure ARM is selected, and image type is selected, and just hit download. So now what we're going to do is using 7-zip extract the file. So go down to extract files, and it will extract them. And if you don't have 7-zip, just check in the description, and I'll provide you a link to download it, and don't worry, it's completely free. Okay, now what we want to do is extract the GZ file using 7-zip. So go to extract here, and it will begin to extract the file. Now what we want to do is create a folder in our internal storage, call it BT5. Then what we want to do is transfer all the contents from the file we extracted, except the GZ file, and transfer them to the BT5 folder folder on our device. So go to the Google Play Store and download an app called BusyBox. After you download it, open it. Allow root permission. And yeah, so basically hit install. You don't really need to worry about this whole system bin or a system X bin. It'll pretty much configure it for you. So just hit install it or you can wait for this little process to complete. But I'm impatient. So I hit install and we'll install it. Okay guys, now that you have transferred the files, what we want to do is boot up Backtrack 5. So on your device, open up Terminal Emulator. Once you're inside, type in SU to gain super user permission and it should say super user permission has been granted so now what we, do, what we want to do is navigate to the folder in which we stored the BT5 uh, files so what we want to do is type in cd forward slash sd card forward slash bt5 and hit enter and now we are in the bt5 folder now let's actually launch BT5. So type sh space boot BT and type hit enter. And here we are. We are now in BT5. And as you see, you should see a root at localhost. And from here, you can do all your commands in which you want to or whatever you do on Linux. Now, of course, if you're like me, I like graphical user, user interfaces, GUIs for short. And I don't like looking at a terminal window just because it doesn't look attractive in any type of way. So let's launch a tight VNC server just so we can connect using Android VNC. So to do this, what we're going to do is type in tight VNC server space, do a dash, geometry. Now you can set this value to anything you want. I'm doing 1280 by 800. just because this is a HD screen but like I said you can use any value you want and hit enter and here we go it started our VNC server now let's create a password just because well we want to we want to do is type in export user in all capitals 
no spaces equals type in root. Here we go, hit enter. And now what I'm going to do is type in VNC P A S S W D. And it's going to ask for a password. So I'm just going to type in a random password. You can make up your own password. It's going to ask you to verify it. Okay, and it's going to ask, would you like to enter a view only password? Just hit no. And here you have it. So you set up a password in your VNC. So let's now go into Android VNC and look at this. So we're going to launch Android VNC. So in Android VNC, you're going to have the nickname, password, uh, address, and port. Now for your password, you're going to type in your password. Your port number, that's going to be the most tricky thing you're going to have to do here because the port should be 5901. However, I'm finding it each time it's different. So if you try 5901 and you get a connection error, try 5902, 5903, and so on. For me, it's 5903. Originally when I did this, it was 5902. And 5901 just never worked for me. So that's the only thing I can suggest when it comes to port. I know there's a file in which you can look at um, and kind of see what port number it is. But I just say, hey, just start guessing. 5901, and keep going up, up, up. And make sure your bit is at 24 bit um, for BPP. And that's pretty much it. So hit connect. And it's going to connect. And whoa, there we are. We are in backtrack 5 right there. And I mean, it's pretty smooth. Just like Ubuntu when I did the Ubuntu video, it was smooth as well. This is pretty smooth. Um, and let's see, are you connected to the internet? I think you should be. Let's try this. Open up Firefox. Now, I know someone's going to ask, can I use this to crack WP? The short answer is no, because of the driver issue. However, I was reading on some forums, and apparently if you did connect uh, external, um, you know, we call it a wireless adapter that's capable of packet, uh, pocket in injections, then you could, in theory, you know, monitor uh, network statuses and, you know, crack WP. And now one thing to remember is when you're done with this, to go back and go to Terminal Emulator and type in Exit. Just because if you just close the VNC, it's still running in the background, still draining your battery, so type in Exit. And it's going to close down Backtrack 5 and you'll be all set to go, really. So yeah, this is how to run Backtrack 5 on your Android device. It's pretty simple and easy to do. I highly encourage you to experiment around, have fun with it, and just try it. So thanks for watching and tune in for another galvanizing video. Thanks.